Shalom, Soldier Cigar Yard here. Um, I'm going to be going into a couple of scriptures that will um, clearly show a specific term. It will clearly show how we see it in the Bible. This is the term Arianism. And uh, it says right here, Arianism maintained... Salakia. Arianism maintained that the Son of God was created by the Father and was therefore neither co-eternal with the Father nor co-consubstantial. And we could see here, it goes on to say, Arianism is a Christological doctrine first attributed to Arius. Arianism holds that the Son is distinct from the Father and therefore subordinate to him. And this is something we could see throughout the scriptures. This, this, this is an aspect of of the most high God that we see um, an aspect of, of the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We see this clearly outlined in the scriptures. Um, we could go to one right now. Go first Timothy two and five clearly outlined for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Hamashiach Yahusha. So we see here in Timothy, Paul is making a clear distinction. He's letting it be known that there is one God and then there's a mediator between God and men. So a mediator, it, 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 it's making a distinction. It's a whole separate entity, a mediator, the man, Christ Jesus. So we see that clear distinction being made between father and son. Um, and we see this throughout the, the entire Bible. That was... Um, First Timothy with Paul, but we could even, I'll get it here. Go to Christ. John 17 and 3, red letters. So we know this is, this is Christ speaking. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Now, now this is out the mouth of Christ himself, making that clear distinction that we see Paul make. So, so with these two scriptures, we, we could clearly see Arianism, this term um, the, uh, uh, of, of the Christological position, um, we could see it being demonstrated in the Bible. We, we, we know that that is the, the true tenets of the Bible. There's no Trinity, you know, no, no, no three, three, three people, one, one God. There, there's none of that in the Bible. We don't see that throughout the scriptures, but we do see. You know, as it says, um, Son of God, we see the Son of God in the scriptures being created by the Father. That's actually another aspect we're going to go into right now. Um, but we see that the Son is distinct from the Father and therefore subordinate to him. And that can even be um, seen here. Let's see. If we go to 1 Corinthians. Eight and five, and th this is actually going to deal with a, a whole other term. Um, actually, let's go to that real quick. So this term, um, monolatry, it's actually a compound Greek word, monos and latreia, and basically it's the belief in the existence of many gods, but with the consistent worship of only one deity. So again, this is something else we see um, in the scriptures that. Um, we, we, we see it be a, a, a polytheism. We see polytheism in, in the scriptures, but we see the most high being being the hegemony, being, you know, the, the, the one deserving of, of, of worship, the, the only true God. We saw that in, in the scriptures we just brought out. There's one God, the only true God. Um, but we see that displayed here in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5, perfectly outlines it. It says, for though there be... For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many. So again, that's Paul letting you clearly, uh, clearly outlining uh, monolatrism in the scriptures, letting you know that our ancestors um, were monolatrists, that our ancestors knew that there were other gods out there. But here, actually, we could go on to verse six. But to us, there is but one God, the Father. So. E e even um even in the scriptures and uh, with dealing with monolatrism, we see again a distinction between 
the other lesser gods, and then the most high God. Even in that verbiage, we're only acknowledging, but to us, there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him. And then again, going into Arianism, um, making a clear distinction, it says, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. So again, we see another example of the distinction being made between the Most High God and His Son. And, and, and we, we start to understand um, the subordination of, of the Son to the Father. And then, like I said, we're going to go back to this um, just to drive this point home. Because uh, one of the tenets of Arianism is that uh where is it i think it's down here oh no it's up here one of the core tenets is that the son of god was created by the father so of course we see that throughout the scriptures as well um i'm gonna do this one first uh colossians 1 and 15 who is the image of the invisible god the firstborn of every creature talking about yahweh shai so, uh, Paul's talking about Yahweh Shai. We could even start. Um, we start at 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. So, you know, clearly talking about Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, who is the image of the invisible God. And again, we, we, we could even focus on that point right there. Um, the distinction that, that Christ is the image of God. So, so it's not saying that Christ is God. Christ is the Most High, but He is an image of the Most High, the firstborn of every creature. That and that that's pretty much the nail in the coffin right there, letting you know the firstborn to be firstborn. He he, he was begotten, the the Most High begot Yahweh Shai. So he, he it's letting you know that he is not. He hasn't been. Um, He's not everlasting like the Father. He has an origin. He he was begotten and he was created. He's the firstborn of every creature. That 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 root word right there is is create. You know, creature is is so, something that that has been created. Um, and we see that Christ was created, showing you again the distinction in 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 the 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 personhood of of the Most High and His Son, and then. Just a, a last nail in the coffin just to drive this point home. Uh, Revelation 3 and 14. Again, red letter. Letting you know it's Christ speaking. Um, and it says, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. So this is out the mouth of Christ himself, letting you know that he is the beginning of the creation of God. So, you know, that's Christ and Paul. You see with those two scriptures clearly aff affirming the tenets of Arianism, you know, the, throughout the Bible. The Son of God was created by the Father and was therefore neither co-eternal with the Father nor consubstantial. So apart from that, we could go to some Old Testament scriptures because, I mean, so far we've only gotten these New Testament scriptures. But we know that we believe in the entirety of the book, old, so-called Old, New, and Apocrypha. So we could go to the Old Testament and further, um, further establish this claim. Um, and not just any scripture. Uh, we could go through prophecy. This is a po uh, a prophecy of of the prophet Micah. Is uh Micah five and two. It says, "But thou Bethlehem of Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me that that is to be ruler in Israel, who's going and this is the main part that I want to focus on right here, whose goings forth have been from old from everlasting. Now we could examine this because with this text, it's letting us know that one, we know that this is a prophecy of the coming Messiah of uh Hamashiach Yahweh. And it's letting us know that his comings forth have been from old, 
from everlasting. And we could go here. So lucky not there. Whose goings forth, whose origin. So this is saying Yahweh Shai's origins, place of going out from, is from old, from everlasting. So regardless, you know, of antiquity, of ancient time, from the beginning, it's even, you know, ascribing him a set time, the beginning. And we know that the most high, here, let me go to that again real quick. It says, you know, down here, beginning. We know that the most high, he, he is outside of time. He is truly eternal. So he has no beginning. But this is letting us know that Yahawashai's origins, his beginnings are from old. Again, making that separation between the son and the father. Clearly. Um, and this is actually, um, this goes against the tenets of Christianity. And we could see that um, established here in this Athanasian Creed, which I'm, I'm going to read um, this background. It says the creed is named, it's like the creed is named after Ath Athanasius uh, from 293 to 373 AD, the champion of orthodoxy against Arian attacks on the doctrine of the Trinity. So this whole creed is against the Arian attacks, against the Arian belief, the, 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 the doctrine of Arianism, which we see clearly established throughout the Bible. And I mean, we could just go through it real quick. Um, it, it, it's pretty crazy. It, it really establishes some of the main tenets of Christianity. But it says, um, now this is the Catholic faith, but we know that this is used by Catholics and Christians. They both affirm this, that we worship one God in Trinity and the Trinity in unity, neither blending their persons nor dividing their essence. Again, Lang, you know that they don't make, they don't divide the essence of the Father, Son, or Holy Spirit. For the person of the Father is a distinct person, the person of the Son is another, and they have the Holy Spirit still another. But the divinity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is one. Their glory is equal, their majesty co-eternal. We just went to at least five scriptures showing you otherwise. But, you know, they go on. What quality the Father has, the Son has, and the Holy Spirit has. Again, one of those main qualities that they just mentioned was co-eternal and we went to several scriptures that shows you that Yahweh Shai has a beginning, that he is not co-eternal with the Father. The Father is uncreated. The Son is uncreated. I mean, come on. This is going against biblical scriptures, against what the Bible actually tells us. And this is how we know that Christianity is nothing but, but dogma and it's nothing but, you know, commandments of man. You know, this is all established by um, extrapolating um, information from the Bible that is not actually there. Um, it goes on, you know, the father is immeasurable. Son is immeasurable. The father is eternal. The son is eternal. Uh, but here, there's more. Again, thus the father is God. The son is God. The Holy Spirit is God. Yet there are not three gods. There's but one. Again, one plus one plus one equals one. Christianity in a nutshell. But again, here, they, they, they keep doubling and tripling down. The father was neither made nor created nor begotten from anyone. The son was neither made nor created. He was begotten from the father alone. Again, if you're begotten, that means that you were created. Like to say that the Most High and Yahweh Shai are the same beings, but one begets another regardless of you, you know, want to use, you know, he wasn't created, he was begotten, regardless of that, that shows a hierarchy of one begets the other. That, that That's not the equality. Um, But yeah, th th this is the Athanasian Creed. You guys could read all of this if you want. It's, you know, a bunch of hearsay and dogma. But this is, you know, the tenets that Christianity and Catholicism hold to. And again, this was named after Athanasius, the champion of orthodoxy against Arian attacks on the doctrine of the Trinity. He didn't write this, but it was named after him because, you know, he 
he was, like they said, the champion of orthodoxy against Aryan attacks. Um, but real quick, I'm going to go to one last verse again. It's going to be a, a, a New Testament verse because we, we, we see most most of the time when Christians want to affirm or reaffirm in their minds the Trinity, they go to New Testament. So I think it's important to 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 have New Testament verses to combat that, but also, you know, Old Testament verses. And we could even go to the Apocrypha to establish what we believe in. But here, um, I'm just go to this one last verse, John 1 and 18. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, hath declared him. Again, another sign of of, of, of hierarchy and of rank. You can't say that the Most High and His only begotten Son are the same in essence and and in 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 power and in you know co-eternal and co-equal. You can't say that they're co-equal. If one begets the other, the only begotten son, and then the other one is in the bosom of the father, he hath declared him. So again, it, it, it it's showing you rank. It's showing you that one is above another. It, it's showing you the hegemony. You know, the, 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 the father. And then underneath the father is the son. It's not the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. It's the father and then underneath the son. Uh, so like underneath the father is the son and we see that's the order so again so like yeah i'm gonna even i'll go to that real quick the word for begotten in the greek so here is monogenous single of its kind only used for only sons or daughters but again we, it, it's the the word for mono alone only and then Genus or genomai, which is uh, to become, to be made. So again, to become and to be made. Again, it's letting us know that Yahweh is the only begotten of the Father because the Father directly created Yahweh. And then, you know, had Yahweh and the angels, you know, Yahweh create the angels and they create. Everything else on behalf of the Most High. But again, just another scripture, John 1 and 18 in the New Testament, which completely destroys the tenets of Christianity and of Catholicism, and most importantly, of the Trinity. So hopefully these scriptures have been edifying. Um, hope you guys learned something. But with that, I'm going to say Shalom.